Welcome back to Hyperbole Automotive episode three. Can you believe we made it? I can't believe we made it. And look, look at this. This is super exciting. And I can't wait for you guys to see the malarkey that went on to get this bad boy into this engine bay. We're missing all kinds of bits and pieces. I'm missing a top rad hose. I'm missing a gearbox mount. The air filter doesn't quite work. The fancy new manifold that we ordered in, they sent us the wrong one because of course, uh, so we've just kind of mishmashed this bad boy together, but the extractors look great. The motor's together and not leaking anything. But then again, I don't know if there's actually anything inside it. But anyway, super excited. Stay tuned. This episode is going to be a good one. So you've just witnessed us getting this to a point where we think we can hit the key. I'm quietly confident that it should turn over because Honda, am I right? But I just want to run you guys past some of the bits and pieces that are on this motor. I know we covered it last episode. Let's just have a bit of a chat about what's on it. We took a lot of the stuff that we needed in terms of accessories and fittings and fixtures off the motor that we dropped out the one that was damaged, and we'll get into that a little bit later too, because turns out I did a heck, a heck of a job on our last motor, it's a doozy. We had to transfer a lot of bits and pieces to the bare motor to, to make sure that this one's gonna run. Something showed up, but as is life, they didn't send us the right things. And though that sucks, we've had to make do. So what was meant to happen was, I was meant to have this gorgeous Skunk 2 intake manifold with this huge aftermarket throttle body. This, this sexy thing was meant to be on that, but they sent us one for a twin cam. So unfortunately, this B series intake is not gonna fit this single cam D series. It's just a little bit too wide across the intake inlets. And even though it looks fantastic, it's a really quality piece, but again, being not for this motor means we cannot go party with it. And that makes Sean sad. But what we were able to do were, we were able to fit the aftermarket throttle body onto the existing intake manifold. It'll be like this huge mouth, but this tiny little inlet that's gonna be pumping the air into this motor. Once the air gets in, this ginormous Skunk 2 cam that we've got fitted into this thing, again, I'll find out the ratios and, and the load profiles for you guys, and I'll put it in the comments or, or the description, but it's massive. Like, it's a really, really chunky, chunky cam. So I am super excited to see, A, if the starter motor has got enough power and torque to, to crank it, because uh, that's going to be a whole discovery session. But also, once it does, uh, to hear what this thing sounds like, because I'm hoping that the chop gods give us some nice chop, 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 chop. These are things that get me excited. But the other cool thing that actually did work was, you remember that spaghetti manifold for the, for the headers? The exhaust manifold? Yeah, so it turns out that they were need a little bit modification to fit. We ended up bending the oil dipstick tube way back against the block. If it starts to drip oil out of there, I'm just gonna have to put some silicon on it because these headers need to stay on this motor because they look fantastic. By putting these on, it's also meant that we're gonna have to modify the exhaust to cover a gap. And do we have to make it run all the way to the back of the car? I don't know, that, that, that's all stuff that we have to discover the next 24 hours. Again, we're meant to be racing this at the D-Series Cup on Sunday. And that means dragging it all the way out to Marulin, which is about, I don't know, seven hours away from where we are right now to get it there. And honestly, it's not gonna have the running time that we need for the motor. So we're gonna be discovering and playing with a whole bunch of different things when we get there. So let's take this first round as like a shakedown session. Did you hear it? It ran. 
this little bad boy ran and it was so choppy. That was probably the most exciting thing that's happened to me in the last at least 24 hours. But super exciting. And yes, there's still a heap of work that needs to be done. Like there's no coolant which is a problem. I'm missing a top rad hose. I'm missing a gearbox mount. There's a heap of stuff that we still need to do to get this thing ready and rolling for Sunday. Because remember, we're taking this thing all the way to round two of the D-Series Cup, uh, which is at Pheasants Wood, which is a brand new track that I've never experienced. Um, can't really find out a whole bunch of information on it, uh, but the guys at D-Series Cup have been really cool and they've been really great with communication. So super excited to meet those guys, super excited to meet a bunch of you. Um, and it, it's, it's, you know what? It's like when you internet your heroes come together, that's what Sunday's gonna be and I'm looking forward to it. Um, but look, just, just a real quick shout out before we get out of here. Um, I just wanna say thank you to the West side panel repair team um they've been killing it really really helping us spin the spanners and getting this thing to work um so it's so a big shout out to, to isaac and sarah i uh, really appreciate you guys letting us do what we do in here uh, and, and take over the workshop a little bit also massive shout out to just cars uh if you're looking for a car and i'm not doing the whole spiely spiel thing but honestly you gotta find stuff that's not anywhere else and also a big shout out to the guys at just pro tools yeah they came in clutch supplied this awesome toolbox and it's quality gear but anyway I'm going to get out of here because I'm super G'd up, super excited. Can't wait to see you guys on Sunday. Let's go racing, baby. Okay, fam, I did it. I really, really did it this time. Turns out I grenaded this old D16. Can you see the size of the hole I put in this, in this crankcase? I literally blew it to smithereens, which is pretty impressive. What's more impressive is I was still in a PB when it let go. I think actually what's even more impressive is that the piston that totally went AWOL didn't come out the sump and also didn't damage the sump. In fact, we're running the same sump that was on this on that. And it looks, it looks perfect. We cleaned it out. We made sure there was no dings, no dents, no rips, no tears. It's perfect, which is kind of crazy. We look at the scale of the damage that happened to the cradle. Like we literally took that piston, uh, sorry, Conrod number four. Everything else looks more or less intact. Like there were signs, absolutely. Like we showed last time with that tiny little, oh, it wasn't little, but with that with ventilation hole that we created on the side of the block. But I wasn't expecting this much damage to be perfectly frank. Like this, this is, catastrophic engine failure at its best. Uh, you know, if you've blown an engine better than this, please hit us up in the comments. I will give you an email address to send us some pictures because man, after looking and diagnosing this thing, I want to see what you guys have done because this feels pretty epic. But eventually we'll get some time and we'll tear this all down and we'll, we'll really give it a thorough inspection. I think maybe, just maybe, that the block might be salvageable and maybe we can bore it out a little bit. Maybe we can get some uh, boost happy pistons. Okay, you know where I'm going with this. This might turn into the turbo motor, but we'll see how, how messed up it is when we pull it apart. But I just want to share that with you guys. Like that's pretty impressive, no? Anyway, let's go back to the old engine.